But I want to give you a little history about how the public lands became public land and how the state lands became state land. And most of this is relevant west of the Mississippi because as our country settled and moved from east to west, there were changes going on in our democracy, there were changes going on in, a, in the fact that we were acquiring and purchasing land from other countries. And the federal government held all those lands. And as the states started becoming states, started becoming admitted to the Union, a lot of those lands were retained by the federal government. And the further west you go, the more land was retained by the federal government. Every state admitted to the Union after the Civil War signed an enabling act, agreeing to forego any claim to the federal lands within their borders. And in exchange for that, these states were given from the federal government anywhere from 5% to 15% of the federal lands. And the federal government gave those federal lands to the states for the purpose of funding their school system. That is the history of how we ended up with large amounts of federal lands in the western states and how we ended up with state land boards in these western states. And if you go and read the constitutions of many of these western states, go and read the Enabling Acts, and you go and read the statutes that they've put in place, all of them have a level of accountability to these state land boards that they are to manage these state lands at a profit for the benefit of the school system. And when we get into some of these examples in later videos about why that profit requirement is important, you'll realize why so many of these states have sold lands. 